how, how have you been anyway? Yeah, it's been a while, but it, you know, there's never a dull moment in this industry. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Now, I know you're based in uh, Phoenix. So how are things down there since the lockdown? Uh, you know, it's been interesting. We, I mean, everything has been hunkered down. I, I don't think it's been as strict as other states, uh, but still everybody's been pretty much quarantined into their homes. So it's been a huge adjustment for everybody. Oh, wow. And yeah. how long have you guys been in lockdown there? Um, probably about um, a solid month. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, yeah. th thanks for giving us a quick update. So I, I know you, you know, you and I have, have known each other for many years, although we haven't yeah. been in touch um, until fairly recently. Sure. But um, tell us a little bit about the company you work for these days. Yeah, absolutely. So I've recently joined World Connection, and they're a, a small to medium-sized BPO um, established in tw 2011. And we have two locations in Guatemala City, which is probably our largest site, and um, Boise, Idaho. Okay. And, and and so tell us a bit about you know what's happening in I'm curious about what's happening in Guatemala as well with the pandemic are they in a similar sort of shutdown over there yeah they absolutely are um, I, I would say that when the government had come and placed some restrictions I mean we were pretty proactive in terms of making sure that our, our employees um, stay safe so before they even put out any kind of strict requirements to only being at home right now they have restrictions in terms of curfews so everybody has to be in their house um, by 3 o'clock p.m. but prior to that we've already sent people home uh, working working from their residence so in, in both of those centers is everybody now working from home or do you still have some staff who, who need to go into the center center yeah I would say in Guatemala City we have a, a skeleton staff on site um, only because one of our clients um, insisted on having uh, some people in a, in a more controlled environment and so we agreed upon that but um, still adhering to to the curfew restrictions for Guatemala Wow okay yeah and, and what, what do you guys do do you do inbound outbound or you know do you also handle social media interactions we do yeah we do we handle um, inbound customer service sales tech support we also do some outbound sales and we also do um, back office support whether it be mailroom processing uh, web chat or email Okay, yeah. and, and so with everything that's going on, I mean, how has it affected the type of, you know, your, your customer base as well? Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, when you're looking at uh, across the portfolio, and I, I think of our customers twofold. One is the clients that we that we are um, contracted to work with, and then, of course, their customers. So I would say because we have such a diverse portfolio of clients, I think um, in terms of preservation, I mean, our, our business is doing well. Some clients definitely in hospitality have uh, definitely reduced their volumes, but we've seen other industries and in terms of small financial loans um, have, have gone up as well. Um, but definitely, I think everybody's been shaken up. I mean, nobody, nobody saw this coming. I mean, so drastically and so soon. But we're we're slowly adapting. But but more importantly, getting some of our clients used to um, a work at home model. Okay. Yeah. And, and before before the pandemic hit, I mean, where, did you ever have it? Did you have any um, any staff working from home, or is it pretty much you've you've had to make the transition? You know, from zero to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, we went from zero to where we are today, but luckily we had already looked into work at home options and by a fluke, our IT team was already testing some machines to be able to figure out how do we uh, remotely uh, support um, our, our PCs. So from a tech support perspective, they had already set up kind of the skeletons in the infrastructure to be able to support remote workers. And so when when all of this ruling came and these restrictions came, we were able to mobilize pretty quickly. Oh, that's really good. So, yeah. so what? Um, so, how how quickly did the uh, the whole transition take them? Yeah, I would say that we we started testing um, at the beginning of the week. I would say by from a Monday to a Thursday. By the end of Thursday, we had a hundred percent of our folks work at home. Wow. And, and do you provide them with all the equipment as well, or do 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 some of your staff actually have their own you know laptops or PCs they're using? Yeah, I, right now the reason why we're able to mobilize so quickly is we um, we assigned our own equipment, our company equipment, to our to our agents, so they were able to take home um, all of the equipment that, that was needed to do their jobs. Um, 
it also helped us ensure that the same security protocols were on our machines. And so there really was no additional setup outside of making sure that we can test connectivity in the B VPN. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. I guess it must have looked kind of interesting with, <laughs> you know, all your employees walking out with computers under their arms <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it, it, was a, it was an interesting site indeed. But I, I think everybody did a brilliant job in terms of coming together, um, working with us to make sure that we, we test correctly. Of the people that didn't have internet connections, they quickly called their providers and got them set up uh, within a couple of weeks. Oh, that's 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 really good. Yeah. So so, so I'm, I'm kind of curious as well with with this rapid shift. I mean, what sort of uh, what were the key challenges you guys had to overcome? Yeah, I, I would say several. I mean, I think our biggest key challenges was to really change everybody's mindset for moving to a, a brick and mortar where you see your supervisors, you see your colleagues every single day. And then how does that translate successfully into a work at home model? And so a lot of it was very unstructured in the very beginning. So we had to mobilize very quickly to be able to, to now still build in the same structures we had on site in a work at home model, just more so. So I think part of it was a transitioning of, of now being alone and working at home. And from a technology stack perspective, we were also quickly looking at and vetting through some additional um, technology requirements, especially for PCI, because I don't think anybody's really um, solved for the whole PCI compliance piece from a physical environment perspective. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and how, how now, you know, you, you, you nicely described some of the challenges. How, how are you dealing with, or how are you, are you managing your staff these days then? Yeah, I would say that we, we've translated a lot of the, the structure that we've had on site and built around a little bit more additional rigor around it. So obviously in a work at home site, you have to have more touch bases with your teams. Uh, we're getting people more used to um, using Teams and chat platforms where they didn't have to, to have it before. Um, and we're utilizing WhatsApp, Skype, Teams, Zoom, um, to have reg regular cadence of uh, one-on-ones, uh, team meetings. So a lot of it, what we used to do on site, we're just kind of doubling and tripling those efforts, and now through digital. Interesting. Yeah. And what about, um, you know, in, in a traditional contact center, it's mm -hmm. it's relatively easy to keep staff motivated because you can go around, you can see when they're sure. having a bad day, a bad call. Um, how, how, how are you keeping staff actually motivated with all the the uh, communication tools that you're using? Yeah, I would say, you know, it's it's never it's never easy, and I'm not going to claim that we, we do it well, but I think some of the things that we used to do on site, we're, now we're trying to figure out how to translate it best in the home, um, home environment. And so we still have, we still run virtual contests. Um, teams still have lunch, and what we've done is we've ordered lunch for people to be delivered to their homes, and so they can do a virtual, you know, team lunch together. We still continue to have prizes and, and raffles. Mm -hmm. So, so, so how, how you, you, can you just describe some of the mechanics about some of the competitions that you're still running then, but albeit from, you know, with staff working remotely? Yeah, sure. I, I would say that, you know, especially in our, in our sales environments, you know, they still have to reach their certain their KPIs. And so, you know, they still every single day, every, every single week, they have some kind of creative contest in terms of how many sales you make. And it's still celebrated and still communicated out through a, a digital forum on productivity and who's the winners and you celebrate it. I think it's just, it, you know, rather than hearing and seeing the hype, you just kind of have to physically be on the platforms to kind of see and, and be more to be able to, to see kind of those, those um, I would say, accomplishments for the teams. And now you have to make the, the invisible visible now. And so everything that you're kind of seeing on screen, now you have to verbalize in meetings. And so we're celebrating more of these successes in our forums. So whether it be in our um, supervisor only meetings, whether it be in our leadership meetings, managers on up, or only the director meetings, uh, we're constantly making sure that we, we connect the dots and continue to recognize and celebrate employees. We do blast emails um, to recognize people's performance. Interesting. That's, yeah. that's really good. And you know, one of the biggest challenges that we've we all we all face when we work from home these days is you know the background noise and distractions and things like that. How, how do you got, how, What sort of advice do you give to your staff to try and minimize that? I mean, what sort of things do you have in place to help with that? 
Yeah, I would say well, one of the requirements that we're working towards, because it was such a quick deployment, now that we've had a little bit of time between then and now, is making sure that our um, our agents identify a quiet space. Now, many of them don't have necessarily a dedicated space, and so we're really working with the individual agents, whether they have daycare issues or pets, really kind of minimizing the noise and making sure that they at least have a place where they can close the door and really kind of concentrate on the work. Um, so we're still working out a lot of the mechanics and but I would say uh, by and large a majority of our agents have been very successful in terms of making sure that they have um, a, a quiet environment to work with um, and, and and try to kind of get their their heads around what this new environment means for them do, do you um, do you foresee that maybe when things get back to some level of normality you might continue on with some agents working from home or do you think you'll bring them all back to a, a centralized central is that still under discussion yeah I would say it's still under discussion I mean we definitely have some some of our clients that um, aren't necessarily sold or bought off on this whole you know work at home model and so definitely those clients will want to bring back the the folks in, in center and obviously by by seeing, by being active, by interacting with people on a daily basis. You know, just our, our operating model is, is much more conducive to the brick and model. But I would say we're always going to have a certain percentage of our staff to augment what we do have with a work at home model because then it allows us to kind of expand our capabilities and our, our staffing and recruitment. Yeah, good point, good point. Yeah. And what about, um, you know, typically team leaders or supervisors in the contact center there? always by their team, they're walking around or they're yeah. monitoring or they're mm -hmm. listening to calls. How, how are you keeping those, those, um, those folks motivated and, and how are they working? Yeah, I would say that, you know, before they would have certain end goals. Well, now we've come together and worked with our team leads and our managers to come up with a much more rigid structure. So every single day by certain time frames, they have to have certain things done or they report in, um, you know, twice a day on what they've been doing. So I would say that the, the rigor is, is I, I would say, much more in place for them. Now from, um, I, I would say, a morale and, and capabilities perspective, I would say a lot of it is, you know, the biggest thing is just making sure that we stay connected with our people and that they know, you know, from, from the top down what's going on every single day, you know, what are the types of things that we should know, sharing information across clients um, and, and just making sure that they, you know, that there just isn't a whole day that they go without any kind of type of communication, whether it be from their direct um, supervisors or managers or from the executive team. Excellent. Yeah. And, 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 you know, again, talking about traditional contact center where you've got everybody huddled together, it's mm -hmm. relatively easy for an agent to put their hand up and say, I, I need some help with this call. I've got, you know, this particular challenge. How, how are you doing it with work from home agents? Yeah, I would say we've we've really kind of now transitioned our team leads and our supervisors to really work as kind of command central. And so they have several monitors up within their workstation. And now rather than seeing a hand go up or seeing somebody stand up, you have to really be diligent in terms of looking at your screens and making sure if somebody's waving at you, somebody's notifying you, somebody's giving you alert um, that you're you're quickly on top of those situations. Um, we're also working with other technology platforms where, again, it gives us real-time alerts in terms of any kind of anomalies that we have, especially in terms of performance as well. So we're, we're trying to figure out how to translate operating into a brick and mortar to a work at home that is much more condensed, uh, real-time, and, um, and leveraging all of our digital tools. Interesting times for sure for all of us, yeah. isn't it, with uh, yeah. this thing? And I, and I guess you, you and all your leadership team are working from home as well. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Excellent. How, how are you coping? Well, I, you know, I, I, normally, I, I normally work in like big large centers and of course you, you get your energy and, um, from, the, from the people and I always learn so much as I'm walking around and so this is a bit of a, a transition, but I would say that you know, having video conferences where you can still see people's faces and still see what's going on and their reactions uh, really does help make sure that we stay connected as an organization and as a team. So, I, you know, I think it takes a bit of an adjustment. I think it takes a lot of best practices sharing and a lot of uh, personal discipline to be able to make sure that we still hit our goals and our targets, um, even in this, in this 
pretty dramatically different environment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and any last parting tips for anybody watching this on maybe some lessons or tips that you can share about making that rapid transition to work from home? Yeah, I would say, you know, never never take anything for granted. Just because you put something out there in terms of overall structure or guidelines, you have to make sure to audit and check to make sure that those concepts get anchored. Because it's too easy for us to say and put out orders and instructions, you know, to six, seven hundred people, and then we just expect people to follow it. And so now we've had to come back to saying, okay, what are those audit things in place to make sure that what we need to happen um sufficiently gets anchored into kind of their daily routine. And so how do we ensure that as an organization from a from a virtual perspective? So always check, always verify, audit your systems. Um, that would probably be the, you know, the, the one bit of advice I would offer people. Excellent. Well, yeah. lots of really good advice. And it's, uh, it's, it was a pleasure catching up with you again. I know we're going to see you later on this year when um, we run our conference, which we were originally going to hold in May, so that's been yeah. pushed back to September. So I know we're going to see you in Orlando later on this year. Thank you ever so much for your time today. You guys stay safe and, and best wishes to you and your family, Hui. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you for your time, Raj. Thank you. And okay. I'll be in touch with you shortly. Take okay. care. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.